All right, what we have here is a photograph of some clouds just printed on regular printer, uh, I don't know, developing paper, purchased at whatever. This one's at Walgreens, one hour photo. Looks like it was back in the year 2000. Um, I didn't take this photograph as far as I can remember. I have a feeling that someone took some photographs and printed out a bunch of them and brought them to a uh, a stamping retreat and uh, you know uh, gave them out to whoever wanted them so I probably grabbed one I'm guessing that's where it came from I'm not sure if you recognize those clouds and uh, this print from back at that time and you gave it to me I wouldn't have stole it uh, thank you very much so anyway if it's yours comment down in the comment section because <laughs> so I'd like to thank you. But anyways, I was going through my things and uh, cleaning up my office and I came across this and I thought it'd be a perfect opportunity to do what they call photo stamping, okay? Um, I want to say the guy that invented, I guess, this technique, I think his name was Randall and I think his last name was Curry or something like that. If that's your name out there, and if you're still out there, thank you for your technique. We, we saw it, I don't know how we saw it. Um, when I say we, I'm talking about stampers and scenic stampers and whatnot, but um, this is way back when. Through the grapevine, somehow I was thinking, the internet wasn't around, but maybe AOL was or something like that, but I don't think people were posting files at the time because dial-up was just so slow So even like a single image, you know, it just took forever, but I don't know we saw it somehow and then Eventually he had an article in uh, rubber stamp madness. Okay I'm just using standard dye based inks on this and hopefully it transfers it used to I don't know Yeah, perfect. Okay. Look at that. What a clean print. I didn't press hard enough right there. No uh, Oh, there's a piece of lint right there. Anyways, but uh, it prints. Your, your standard just dye base print. Oops, this side. Your standard dye base prints print on this. Very good. Okay, I had a little piece of lint there, no problem. Um, but surprisingly, I don't know, I was always shocked that this thing printed like it does. So this printer paper, uh, I don't know, whatever, professional developing paper. I have a feeling that it's similar to, say, photo printer, that you would print something out, you know, in your inkjet printer. And you tend to get some pretty, you know, decent uh, prints from it with that emulsion on there. All right. So I'm doing this as a uh, mood and media. I haven't added to that series in quite a while, but let's work through this standard. Here's my standard composition right here just done in all kinds of different styles and media and colors and whatnot. So let's go with something like that. Just so we can do a little comparison contrast type of thing. All right. Now this is a really easy way to stamp a scene out and have kind of an existing, you know, color scheme and foundation in the background and whatnot. I always liked photo stamping and the, and the entire look of it. Some people get really um, creative with it, and they don't just do background skies or sunsets or, you know, those transitioning kind of, you know, split fountain styles of sky colors, although it's a good way to do it, but they actually incorporate objects into it, and it was, you know, amazing stuff, you know, with the things that they can think of. Um, so I, I've seen all kinds of different compositions over the years, but um, I don't know. I, you know what I really liked about photo stamping, too? Now, a lot of times, one of the things that people tell me is, um, you know, after they start scenic stamping, they, they say that they become more kind of observant of nature, colors, the moon or something like that, but not just saying, oh, look at there's a full moon up there, but they'll look to see kind of more in depth, um, kind of, you know, some observations of how clouds look around it and whatnot, uh, the different contrasts and lighting maybe. I don't know. It, 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 you know, what they're, what they're telling me, I th you know, is that they, they've come to appreciate it, you know, things even more, being that they're incorporating it into their 
I don't know, their pastimes. So um, that's always kind of nice. But um, one of the things about photo stamping too, I mean, it's a perfect opportunity for observation, you know, every, and plus everyone has a camera nowadays on their phones. So um, it really kind of gives them um, kind of uh, the incentive to really observe and to notice different things that are happening out there, changes in weather, time of day, etc. All right, now this is on a four by six. My other scenes are on four and a quarter by five and a half quarter page. So this is a little bit of a different dimension. So here's the scene right here, stamped out, you know, quite a different look, isn't it? But what a cool type of thing. Now in photo stamping, just in general, um, I mean, you can do things in different ways, but I tend to think that the easiest types of imagery happen to be the ones that are a little bit more silhouette based, you know, stronger solids within the um, imagery. If it's kind of a wide open one, like a like a cabin or something like that with a lot of wide open space, you're going to have that imagery showing through it, right? Now I do have it showing through in here in these rocks, but it kind of reads more as just some shadows or whatnot. Okay, now one of the things that I like and uh, I think finish these, these pieces off a little bit more is to go back in and introduce some coloring into the scene, okay? Now that we know where our imagery is, we can enhance some of the shadow areas. And you're saying, well, how do you do that? Well, all you have to do is you observe. So if you see kind of some darker areas, you know, like around that water line, you can see it's darker, right? So if you just take whatever color scheme is in your uh, photograph as a foundation, it's a good thing that you can kind of add in some additional tones. Now, a lot of you have things like alcohol markers. That color right there really matches that sky, doesn't it? This one's uh, salvia blue and the La Plume permanence. A lot of you have you know, a, a nice wide array of um, colors to work with, um, with the alcohol marker kind of a uh, Pop, you know, the popularity of that. This one's a really light blue. Yeah, that one, that color is kind of down here in the sky, maybe a little bit. So anyways, you can work through kind of a nice value range of whatever color scheme is within the piece. Or, I mean, you could go into these rocks right here and color them something completely different too, like a gray or whatnot. Let's look and see if we have some of that. I'm kind of, I'm kind of, uh, um, stalling here too because I'm waiting for this ink to dry a little bit more um, before I start going into it. I, I, I have a feeling that there could potentially be some smearing going on but I'm not worried about that too much if there's a little bit of blending of tone and that black goes back into solution somehow. It shouldn't because alcohol and water, you know the dye-based inks, don't mix but that ink could be raised a little bit and if the surface if that emulsion surface to this paper kind of um, uh, moistens a little bit it could blend a little bit so I'm not sure all right now that's a little bit too dark of a gray let's see if I have a lighter gray I like working with some lighter tones and then working incrementally into some darker tones okay so let's just do a little test I, I haven't done photo stamping in in a really long time. Okay, this is perfect. That ink is set. All right. Different inks are going to act differently. I, now, I want. I, I don't think I would color over something like a Versafine. Okay, because Versafine is a pigment ink, and it's designed to really just sur sit right on the surface of the paper. So I, I have a feeling if you went back into it with something like a pen and did some additional coloring, I do think that one would blend out and smear unless you incorporate it into the technique and you're able to control you know that that ink going back into solution maybe you use it to blend around and to uh, um, create some gradations I don't know I, I suppose that could be done but that seems like extra a little bit of extra work here you know for me and I'm not into that so much it might seem differently you know some people 
see my scenes, they think I'm kind of, you know, do like doing things in depth and tedium and all that, you know, detail and all that. I love detail, but I'm not into the tedium that certain types of techniques come with. I want things easy, all right? Now people look at the stuff and they say, oh, that's not easy, but the methodology is very easy that I do. I just did some coloring of some outline images recently, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, this is like, this is too much work for me, <laughs> you know? But most people don't think, you know, don't think twice about coloring, but to me, that's a lot of extra work. That takes more time than um, just, you know, going over something, everything with the same color or whatever, and just kind of blending everything in. All right, now what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm adding some tone at the base of these rocks, okay? So you think about rocks being toplit in this case, okay? I suppose with some photographs it might look like it's backlit, but I'm just basically going in and just lightly coloring um, some of the base of my rocks. I'll hit it in the shadows a little. And I'll tell you, this paper is really fantastic. Um, that ink is really hard set. It's probably set even more so than uh, um, glossy cardstock. So that being said, maybe, you know, um, in on glossy photo paper, you do this style of coloring as opposed to um, like the great swashy blending of tones that I do in a lot of uh, my scenes, you know, with overlaying layers of ink, um, uh, emulsion, the emulsion coating on this paper really dries fast, so maybe it is so conducive. It looks okay, but it just takes a lot of extra work, but I don't know, this is the alcohol markers on uh, photo paper look is fantastic because that ink is really crisp and it's not going back into solution at all. So see, I'm kind of just adding in some extra shadow. You see the shadows kind of drawn into the design too. I can just come right down in there. I'm just doing it with a fairly light color. Well, I, on white paper it's not so light, but when you're doing it over a color that isn't too much darker than this one right here, okay? because that foundation is already a little bit darker in the photograph. It doesn't show up quite so much, so it's not making a big commitment to that color. If, if you don't want it, and oftentimes I don't want a big commitment to that color. I like to build it up gradually so I don't have kind of un, you know, unexpected types of uh, uh, marks and whatnot. I like things to build up nice and gradually so that I have a lot of control over it. All right. So it's not some kind of precarious thing. I I almost never, well, maybe this isn't the description for it. I, I almost never have kind of uh, mistakes, okay? And it's because I just work things nice and gradually, and I just kind of build things up. And I'm usually working from light to dark. And I can just watch things happen really slowly and whatnot. Now, see, some of the, the same types of things can apply. I mean, um, I can go into that probably and add a little bit of extra tinge of some color if I want to, a pale pink or something like that. Do I dare do that here? Okay. I say that because I just haven't, uh, you know, done this in a really, really long time. <laughs> so I don't know what to expect. That's way too... Uh, Here's a little bit of yellow, okay, or orangish, an orangish, jish tinge. Look at that, isn't that fun? I'm just adding a little bit of warmth to the top. Can you see that in the photograph, or in this video? See, I'm just adding this tinge in there. It's like a um, photo tint, like black and white photo tinting, you know? You can just kind of go in there and, I don't know, kind of adding this little bit of temperature. That's kind of nice, uh, as a nice little addition. And why not bring that? If there's a warm light shining on these clouds here, it would stand to reason that there'd be some down here, so you can color in here. And see, this is such a light tinge here, that value of this color. I can just go in here and I don't need to worry about going over blue and having it look green or something like that. This is just a tiny, what is this? Pale yellow. So anyways, there's a, just a little bit of warmth up there. 
All right, let me see this right here. Here's a little bit of pink. Let's add a little. I'll add in a little bit of a darker area first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of nice. See that little touch of pink up there? And let's add a little bit of that reflection down here in the water. All right. Now it's a little bit too harsh, so we'll just take our blender pen, right? I say it's harsh. I can barely see it here, but uh, we can go and blend that out a little bit. Okay, like so. And I see that just going right immediately back in sol into solution, so you can really manipulate it. But, all right. All right, should we? Let's get a little bit more bold, okay? Enough with this, uh, of this really kind of passive, uh, passive application of tone. I'm still not going to get super bold, but let's go into the shadows a little bit and develop them a little bit more, okay? I'll just go in here like this and just right around at that water line just kind of weight these down. It's kind of putting it's making the ink that I've already applied go back into solution. I can see it, you know, and you get that kind of separation um, that ha you know that alcohol inks do, but I'm that's not that's not a problem for me because I I tend to like that type of texture anyway. And I feel like there's a lot of control over it because, I mean, I can, if I don't like it at all, I can take the blender pen and practically eradicate all of my application of it. So plenty of time to kind of play around with it. But do you see where I'm kind of going into the shadows and developing it more? So instead of just stamping that image right over the top and just leaving it as is, you anchored it down with some additional color. And I suppose you can do this in dye-based inks as well. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would use this type of thing with that really specific edge, but it would certainly be really conducive for like brushes, stipple brushes, or something like that to go in and tone that in, or you can add a vast area of color up there and whatnot, but um, fun stuff. Anyway, um, I don't know, that, that was a lot of fun. I like how it was just I can just go right over it with the pens, and I mean, that imagery was hard set, no waiting for it to dry or anything like that, but anyway, a pretty effective little scene here, and I mean, these things come together really fast, and I'm sitting here blabbing away and talking about it. I mean, you can do this scene in just a couple minutes. So let's say you did one kind of more around twilight or something like that. There could be blue skies, there could be a lot of color in the sky. Um, I could tint that whole thing with a darker blue and then turn this from something of a daytime type of scene into a darker time of thing. You could splatter paint it with the bleed proof white and whatnot and turn this whole scene into a kind of a winter scene, put little white highlights on the top of that and you can mass produce a bunch of these, you know, in no time at all. So, and the fact that these things dry like that, not too bad, you know, it's a pretty good option for things like uh, Christmas cards or whatnot. You can imagine you can stamp, you know, if you have a, a bigger area, you know, with more white clouds, you get, it would leave word for like a word stamp or whatnot. So anyways, that's photo stamping for you. Thanks to, uh, if I'm getting the name wrong, but I think it's Randall Curry, you know. Um, I don't know why I remember that name, P possibly there's like, I don't know, one of the few guys that did a, you know, in like an article in the uh, Rubber Stamp Madness. But anyways, what he started doing too, uh, um, I think he started selling packs of, uh, you know, sky figures um, for photo stamping at some point in time. I seem to remember that going around or whatnot. I might have even seen him at a convention one time. For some reason, I, uh, he, it seems like I've seen him before. I don't know why, but um, anyways, a great uh, technique and methodology uh, he brought to the uh, the scenic stamping where I don't know if I've seen other people do you know photo stamping in other genres but why not you know I mean I think it would be awesome and can you imagine doing something like this too? take some photographs of some skies but then you know in post-production or in camera do it in black and white so we have Halloween coming up and can you imagine tinting this with some oranges or something like that or just going for kind of a spookier kind of background and just stamping your haunted house or whatever over the top of that and maybe taking like a little white gel pen or something like that and, and turning the lights on inside of the house or maybe a yellow one inside that house right and then suddenly your lights would be on in kind of this 
you know instant background uh, for your uh, for your for your scenes or whatnot, especially when it comes to things like mass production types of cards. You know, for maybe for the holidays and whatnot, where you're doing. 10 15 20 you know i don't know some people do like 50 i don't know how you do that but uh anyways i think that would be a great option for that and a really great um methodology so i don't know if you're doing something like that maybe you just haven't printed out at you know like a costco for i don't know what is it four or five cents each and save your toner too so really good way to do it another option and uh yeah i guess that's about it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it if you like this video, hope you like, share, and subscribe.